Howdy folks, these are my unaged rums that are made from fresh pressed sugar cane. These two are from Mexico. I want to tell you all about them. Let's go. So when you think of spirits from Mexico, usually you think of tequila or maybe mezcal, but they make rum as well. They make rum all over the world. Uh, there aren't really any rules about it. Now, when you're looking at a new bottle of rum, there are a couple of things that you might want to know. First is what it's made from. Um, in the case of rum, you want to know is it made from molasses or fresh pressed sugarcane or something else. Molasses is a byproduct of the sugar refining process uh, and lots of rums are made from molasses. Basically, you'd have a sugar refinery and next door you'd have the distillery. They'd refine the sugar producing a bunch of molasses, they just send it over to the distillery who would ferment it and distill it, and then you got rum. Now the other way to do it is just to squeeze the sugar cane until the sort of sweet sugary juice comes out, uh, and then you ferment that and make rum from that. Sort of generally which way you go sort of just depends on where you are in the world. In Martinique uh, and Haiti and a few other places, Brazil, they, um, they generally do the fresh pressed sugar cane method. Pretty much everywhere else does molasses. Now the second thing you might want to know is what kind of still they're using. Generally it's broken up into pot stills and column stills. Pot stills are a more traditional type of still. They've been around for a very long time. Um, lots of distilleries will use pot stills including scotch and Irish whiskey which are made in pot stills. Uh, Jamaica favors the pot still and you'll typically get a sort of more flavorful spirit from a pot still. Column stills are a newer invention. They're more efficient uh, and you get sort of a cleaner, crisper spirit uh, from a column still. In Martinique, the French have mandated that you use these French column stills to make the rum agricole. Now, one's not necessarily better than the other. Um, a lot of distilleries will have both. Um, they'll do both types and maybe blend it for their final product. Or the spirit they're making goes from one to the other. They'll do first the column still, then the pot still, or something along those lines. Now, the third thing you might take note of is the age. Um, how long was it aged and what kind of barrels. What we're drinking today isn't aged, so I'll just save that topic for another time. So bearing all that in mind, our first rum today is Camazots. It is a pot still rum uh, from Oaxaca. It's made from fresh pressed cane juice. It is 48% alcohol. We're gonna try it out. Our second rum isn't technically a rum. It's called a Charanda. And this comes from Michoacan, which is a state in Mexico. Uh, they have a denomination of origin uh, from the Mexican government, so you can only make a charanda from a very small number of uh, places in Michoacan, Mexico. Places are at high elevation, over 4,000 feet, and they have this very rich red volcanic soil. Now the word charanda means red soil, and this brand, Urupan, uh, this is the name of a town in Michoacan. This Urupan is actually pretty interesting. It is half fresh pressed sugar cane in a pot still and half molasses in a column still. And although you do get a lot of blends in the rum world, they don't often state explicitly on the bottle what they are, so that's pretty cool. They even go so far as to list the variety of sugar cane that they're using. That's a level of nerdery I am not quite ready to get into. It's a little bit hard to find the actual rules about Charanda, but I think it's limited to a certain number of varieties of sugar cane. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to an article I read on Imbibe magazine about Charanda. It's got a lot of good information in there if you're interested to uh, learn more about Michoacan and some of the problems they're having there and about the rum and etc. So go check that out if you're interested. I'm gonna try this Camazots Oaxacan rum. Hmm. <laughs> it's got a very sort of funky aroma. It is fermented using wild yeast. I did read that. It smells amazing. It's very grassy. Very, um, that's what you get out of these fresh pressed unaged ones. This is a very grassy vegetal kind of note. Ooh. Okay. It's a little hot. It's not like the smoothest spirit. It's got a little bit of a, like a thinner finish, not a super long flavorful finish, but it's I mean, it's pretty interesting. A lot of sort of vanilla, vanilla sort of tropical fruit notes, but like a like unripe, like an unripe banana or like an unripe pineapple or something like that. Tastes a little bit young. 
And that made me think, what if we age this? So I aged a little bit. So what I did just for fun is I got one of these charred oak sticks. Now these sticks, they don't have a lot of wood, but they this one's cut in like a spiral shape so that it has sort of the maximum surface area of wood on there. If you don't want to invest in like a whole barrel to do like a, a barrel aged cocktail experiment, you get some of these little sticks, pretty fun. Now this is no substitute for actual real aging and this has only been in here for two weeks, but I'm just gonna see if this makes a big difference. You can see how much color it got on there. It's pretty good. Yeah, you, <laughs> you get a little bit of wood on there. It doesn't smell quite as, it's sort of taming some of these um, wild smells that I was getting before. Mmm. Oh. Yeah. And it's really, it's really mellowed out some of that burn. Mm, I'm getting a little bit more of that vanilla flavor. Oh, it's pretty fun. Yeah, this is pretty cool. We all know that aging works and that, um, you know, aging a raw spirit will, you know, give you some some more interesting notes and mellow out some of those harsh flavors. But um, you can do it at your house in a couple of weeks with a stick. So who knew? Yeah, this is pretty good. I might make an old fashioned with this later. All right, so let's try this Urupan Charanda. They also make an aged virgin and some other expressions, but this is the one we can get here in the States. It has some of those sort of wild fruit funky notes, but a little much more subdued. It's got a lot of like vanilla notes. Yeah, like a lot of vanilla, butterscotch, um, caramel kind of notes, which is interesting because you get a lot of that from an aged spirit, but getting it from an unaged one, I don't know what it means. It's a bit easier to drink than the Camelzots. It's um, it's got this nice sort of vanilla, caramel, butterscotch uh, aftertaste. It lasts a bit longer and the mouthfeel is nice. It's got this sort of creamy, thick mouthfeel. Oh, I, I like this a lot. Uh, this is, it reminds me of something else. It reminds me of like an unaged whiskey in a way, which is kind of odd, but I really like this a lot. I think I'll make a cocktail with this at a later date. If you wanna see me make a cocktail with this stuff, um, subscribe down below so you'll be alerted when that video comes out. Uh, in the meantime, uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.